I finally reread Percy Jackson. Mind you, the last time I read Percy Jackson, the first series at least, in full was when I was nine. I forgot pretty much everything past the Sea of Monsters. And as I was reading it, and mind you, uh, this video will cover both the first and second series. I I'm just putting them both together. I finished it like last week and I've already started The Trials of Apollo. As I was reading through these series again, I just wrote down random thoughts that came to mind. So here are my dumbass anecdotes as I was rereading Percy Jackson. The first one is, I love Percy. That's it. That's the tweet. You know, I think we forget that Percy was a skater boy and a jock, but he also uh, respects women. And I don't think a man like that exists. That makes... Percy as a 12 year old better than all men in real life. So um, good on him. Annabeth and I would be best friends and you can't convince me otherwise. Also, I would probably have a crush on both Percy and Annabeth if I were 12. Do you ever think Chiron has a guilty conscience when he sends 12 year olds on literal death quests? Chiron just sends 12 year olds on quests. I get that they're demigods, but they're kids. They're, these are literal children. I don't care if the books aren't real. This 4,000 year old dude just sends literal children on death quests to appease the gods. Does that not concern you? Cause it concerns me a little bit. I wrote down here, uh, action scenes bore me a lot. Good thing I can skim. One of the best things, uh, if the only thing that the American education system taught me was uh, how to skim reading. I can read lightning speed. I'm not an action scene person, so you're probably asking, Nick, why the fuck did you read Percy Jackson? <laughs> Good fucking question. I would also like to know. I got the gist of what was going on. And at this point, I was being all uwu over Nico D'Angelo. I wrote down 10 year old Nico D'Angelo with his mytho magic cards almost made me cry. I wish I could go back and shield him from the world. It did almost make me cry. I wanted to protect that little boy. Do you kin Nico D'Angelo or are you straight? I just wanted to go into the books and like adopt him and like shield him from the world because at this point I knew what was going to happen to him and I knew that he would be completely destroyed like his soul. I want to protect baby D'Angelo. He's just a little boy that liked his mytho magic cards. I also really like Tyson. I was kind of mad at 13 year old Percy for being almost like ashamed of him. He was 13 but like I'm glad Percy got over that and realized that he was being a dunce. Also, are we just gonna forget that at 12 years old, Percy battled a god and low-key won? The god of war and won. Jesus, fuck Percy. Also, at the end of Lightning Thief, when he's on the news and he's like fake crying and talking about how much he, he misses his stepdad and he uses that to like send a bunch of people for free appliances to annoy his smelly stepdad. Percy, you are 12 and you're a genius. Are we also just forgetting that Sally Jackson like straight up murdered her husband with a Medusa head and then sold it? I feel like that's queen shit. Sally Jackson was apparently just so fucking amazing, so beautiful, so just mind blowing to Poseidon that Poseidon had to break a godly vow with his brothers not to fuck. <laughs> I feel like Sally Jackson is like the ultimate mom. Homegirl probably could have gotten god status, but she would have said no because she's that fucking awesome. Uh, are we also forgetting that literally five people had a crush on Percy Jackson in the same summer? Honestly, I don't blame them. If I were 13, and I saw Percy Jackson doing Percy Jackson shit. I, me too. Percy getting turned into a guinea pig. Still funny. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, but I love Cerberus the Hellhound. Percy just has a fucking hellhound. A very large, large boy. I love that this large dog from hell plays fetch. Makes me happy. The fact that Percy's fatal flaw is that he's too loyal it, it just, 
sounds like some of y'all under like those be honest, what's your toxic trait tweets. You know, those bitches that are like, I love too much. Do you not know what a toxic trait is? It sounds like you're humble bragging. I get it. It might get in the way of some of his quests or whatnot, but like it just makes Percy like the only straight boy that deserves rights. Like Annabeth's fatal flaw is hubris, which is an actual toxic trait. And Percy's is just being loyal. A lot of women that like men always complain about no loyalty in men. And here Percy is having his fatal flaw be loyalty. Okay, Rick, make him the only straight man that deserves rights, I guess. Percy Jackson crashing his own funeral? That's king shit. He was so chill about it too, and everybody was like, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> Where were you? And he's like, macking it up with a titan's daughter, bitch. <laughs> At this point, I had a crisis. It really fucking bothers me that technically these demigods are cousins and that they date each other, DNA loophole or not. Because, you know, I think eventually Rick realized how fucking weird that was and tried to create a loophole so it wasn't as fucking weird, but it still doesn't work. All of these demigods are literally cousins and or aunts and uncles of each other. That's so weird. And so Rick was like, oh shit, I fucked up. And in the sequel series, he said that there's a DNA loophole. Technically gods don't have DNA, despite the fact that the kids end up, you know, looking like the gods sometimes. So you're not being very consistent, Rick. But anyways, even so, just because gods have no DNA or whatever the fuck, that doesn't mean that they aren't cousins. Both my parents actually are adopted. They're adopted into their families. They have no DNA connection to these families. It would still be wrong for my mother or my father to date their cousin. Like, it's still weird, no matter if there's no DNA connection or not. It's still uncomfy. So I don't think the DNA loophole works here, and I'm trying to ignore it for the sake of my sanity, but every time I think about it, it I, I just go down the rabbit hole and lose my fucking mind, and all I can hear is, sweet home camp half-blood. And um, here, I um, start losing my mind over familial connections that are at Camp Half-Blood. Technically, Athena, the goddess, is Jason's sister. Do you think about that? Do you think about that sometimes? Because I do. And Talia and Jason Grace are um, Annabeth's aunt and uncle. Do you think about that sometimes? Because I do. I truly hate it here. That, that connection made me want to die. <laughs> Annabeth is dating her uncle's cousin. I hate it here. And Talia and Jason are technically also siblings to Apollo as well, and Artemis. And you know, Will is also dating his uncle's cousin. So I'm um, sweet home camp half blood. Okay, so you know when like Talia Grover and Percy are on the dam and they start making the dam jokes. You know, they're like, I'm gonna go to the damn snack bar while you go to the damn bathroom. And they start giggling like children. That scene's supposed to be funny, right? And I mean, it was funny. I giggled. It also reminded me that these are literal children. These are children on a death mission again. Okay, the fact that Will Solis at like 13 lost two brothers in the same battle war, and then became the head of the Apollo house in one fell swoop, uh, really hurts me. I think about Will Solis sometimes, and I hurt. I, I was gonna say that it's pr unlikely probability-wise that Percy would survive through two great prophecies, but um, then again, it is a children's book about demigods, so it's not really likely in the first place. <laughs> I love how Percy can like battle fucking minotaurs at 12 years old, but he's so awkward when it comes to Annabeth. It is so funny. He doesn't know how to talk to girls and Annabeth is like, you're fucking stupid, I love you. Sometimes I just felt like Rick was shoehorning in another side battle that's unnecessary. And then he'd like put in 
an actual reason for that side battle to be happening, and I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, fine, Rick. Unpopular opinion, the ages of Hazel and Frank make me really uncomfortable. I get it, they're all like demigods in a life or death situation, and they probably don't have time to think about the ages of the people that they're dating, but to give it some perspective, Hazel would be in seventh grade, and Frank would be a, a sophomore in high school. Mmm, I don't like that. Frank is a himbo, and I love him, but, and I don't want to like baby Hazel because she's like 80 years old, but at the same time, it's like, still uncomfy. I'm uncomfortable. Jason and Piper kind of feel like a rushed relationship. I mean, it's literally based on a lie, and I mean, Rick repeats this several times throughout the second series. You're just gonna go with it, you guys? You're just gonna, that's fine with you? At the end of the series, Jason for Piper did recreate a fake memory in real life to make the memory real, and I was like, okay, that's sweet. I, I don't really know what Piper sees in Jason, but it's fine. I'm gonna be real with you, Piper's I'm not like other girls thing is a little cringe. It's realistic for girls her age to go through that phase, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Percy and Annabeth are the only heterosexual enemies to friends to lovers that uh, isn't toxic and uh, is valid. I've never seen such a healthy uh, dynamic like that from a heterosexual relationship in writing because usually if it's heterosexual enemies to friends to lovers, it just means the man is being abusive, uncomfy. But eh, this was healthy, so I applaud Rick for that. I need to say that Annabeth is such a well thought out, strong female side character. She is so incredibly smart and like some of the shit that she thinks up is just, she's incredible. I would have 100% both had a crush on her and Percy if I were uh, 13 years old at Camp Half-Blood. She took on a solo quest that, you know, tons of other Athena children died doing and she fought her way out of it and, you know, threw a giant spider into Tartarus. Yes, I have a crush on Annabeth. Why do you ask? <laughs> Jason and Percy having a hyper-masculinity pissing battle will never not be funny. I asked this question before I started reading The Trials of Apollo, and it's since been answered in The Trials of Apollo, but I'm going to uh, give the thought as is. So we know Athena gives birth to brain children, you know? Uh, Annabeth did not come out of a womb. She's a brain child. But what about the other female gods? Does Aphrodite carry for nine months? Does Aphrodite go into labor? The male gods can just dig down and leave, but what about the women? It's unrealistic to say that uh, certain demigods don't have uh, some form of PTSD after this, especially those that went to Tartarus. I'm not saying that right, fuck you. Annabeth and the fandom may joke that Percy is stupid, but he's not at all stupid. Some of the plans he comes up with on the spot are also genius. Percy kind of represents a different kind of smart. Like Annabeth is your stereotypical book smart, but Leo and Percy are kind of like the I'm stupid in the way I joke sort of smart. They can think of shit right on the spot, and Leo is literally like a genius mechanic. I have a headcanon that Percy would randomly greet Jason by singing Jason Derulo and would promptly get struck by lightning. I have a problem with Jason. Is he really supposed to be the Roman mirror of Percy? With three months or so of proper training, Percy accomplished three times as much as Jason, who did like, what, fucking 15 years of training at a hardcore camp? I don't think this is an evenly matched battle, Rick. Percy did way more than Jason and is way stronger than Jason. Jason did not battle Ares as a 12 year old and win. Rick, you kind of, you dropped the ball there, buddy. They are not good mirrors of each other. I've seen a lot of people saying that the relationships and character development in the Heroes of Olympus weren't that fleshed out and I'd have to agree. Uncle Rick also dropped the ball on that one. 
He focused too much on the side battles and not relationship development between different characters. Percy went through a lot of shit with Hazel and Frank. And yet it was like there was barely any interaction between them. It was like suddenly they didn't mean shit to him anymore. And you know, I didn't get any of that new interaction, you know? Like I wanted to see more Leo and Percy because they're both idiots. <laughs> I wanted to see some funny quips and I got a couple, but the stupid fucking Calypso plot line got in the way of uh, that fun quipping uh, relationship they could have had where they just said dumb shit to each other and it was funny. That friendship could have been so powerful, but Rick took that from me by forcing an unhealthy enemies to lovers trope in with Leo. Yeah, I don't approve of Calypso and Leo because I feel like that's an unhealthy enemies to lovers hetero relationship. Rick should have just let Leo learn to love himself by himself. Reading Nico's coming out scene to Jason with the battle with Cupid had just as much impact as a 19 year old as it did on me when I was 13. I love Nico. Do you kin Nico D'Angelo or are you straight? I love how Percy was like, LMAO, I might be sending you to your death, Annabeth, but let's have pizza in Italy first. Let me take you on a date before I send you to your death. <laughs> what the fuck, Percy? That's cute, Percy, but she might die. I kind of relate to Leo a lot. He said, I understand machines more than humans, and I, I felt that. One of the things that kept coming up is I don't understand why Annabeth and everybody else was so afraid of Percy being able to control poison in Tartarus. I don't understand it. Percy has done much scarier things, like battle Ares as a 12 year old. We knew Percy was powerful, dude. I don't understand why that was so terrifying, especially because the goddess that was getting poisoned to death was trying to kill them. Percy was saving you, Annabeth. Percy was saving himself. It wasn't like he was doing it out of the pure hatred of his heart. And it kept coming up. And I was like, I don't understand. There are so many more reasons why you could be afraid of Percy, but controlling poison is one of them. It's not even his poison. Cusco's poison, the poison of Cusco. I don't understand that weird character development thing you were trying to push there. I just don't get it. Doesn't seem as scary in comparison to the rest of the stuff Percy could accomplish. Percy is probably the greatest demigod of his time. He could, you know, rival a god at a certain point. There are way better reasons to be afraid of Percy Jackson than him controlling a poison in Tartarus. They were in fucking Tartarus. What do you want me to, what do you want to, what, what did you want him to do, Annabeth? You wanted to die? Is that what you wanted, Annabeth? It kept coming up. And I was like, why? This is, it's not that serious. You were in hell. I also just can't believe Rick just tossed Persebeth into Tartarus. Like, fuck Rick, chill, dude. One line when they were in Tartarus really sort of stuck out to me. Apparently, An Annabeth and Percy, their brains were like, censoring Tataris for them. They were seeing the PG version of Tataris, but apparently Nico saw the real version of Tataris. If that boy does not get a therapist, Nico D'Angelo needs therapy. I'm worried about him. Can I be his adoptive father? There's barely any like Tyson and Grover in the second series, and I get it, they're on like a ship in the Atlantic for you know, most of it, but it's like, Grover was Percy's best friend, where is he? I, I understand he's on a council now, but like, it, it, he just disappears. Where'd he go? They were best friends, what happened? There's an empathy link. There's still an empathy link. Where, what happened to that, Rick? Will and Nico interactions gave me a will to live. Pun very intended. You can kill me at sunrise. Clarice being named the baby satyr's godmother is the funniest shit. I love that. I love everything about that. Satyr, satyr, satyr. I'm not saying it right, fuck you. I love that Octavian died through catapult. They launched that bitch. Frank as Praetor. I do wish that Rick didn't like suddenly make Frank like a hunk. Let us have a chubby character, man. The fact that Jason went from wanting to leave Nico to die to being like Nico's big brother um 
it's the cutest shit ever. But it also made me hate Jason less because, you know, I, I actually saw somebody say that Jason looks like, you know, your typical white Republican boy, but he would, you know, punch a homophobe, you know? I don't hate Jason. I just wish Rick thought about it more. Will is perfect for Nico, and I know there are anti-Solangelo people, but I think Will is perfect for Nico, okay? Because nobody else could get Nico to take care of himself. Will demanding three days in the infirmary? Thank you, Will. Take care of him. Will is the <laughs> aforementioned therapist I want Nico to see. <laughs> Plus, for the people that are like, uh, Solangelo is forced. Let me have the grumpy one is soft for the sunshine one. Let me have it. Let me have the trope. Let me have it in gay yearning. Nico telling Percy that he's not his type? The funniest possible thing Nico could do. Like, Percy is smart in, like, battle situations, but in social situations, it might take him several weeks to decode that, Nico. He's gonna <laughs> be thinking about that for <laughs> trying to understand what the fuck he meant for a few nights. <laughs> Thank God Leo is not actually dead. I kind of figured, but I'm confused as to how the dragon allowed Calypso to leave. Um, did the gods just suddenly let her go? All it took was a bronze dragon? How did that work, Rick? Why was the curse lifted by a bronze dragon, dude? What what happened there where Calypso could suddenly leave? I don't understand. I don't understand. My Trials of Apollo video is literally just gonna be me talking about Nico D'Angelo and Will Solis, and you have that to look forward to. Rick is my dad. Uncle Rick, adopt me. Uncle Rick, adopt me, please.